Italy. Uh, okay, um, I recently started to work on, on um, sorry, at Baylor University. And I'm really, really happy to know more people here. I'm working on even uh, my, my, actually my main research now is quantum machinery. But let me uh, try to uh, say something uh, interesting, which is, uh, let me say more about me, more about my background. Um, so about me, uh, I finished my uh, bachelor degree at uh, Columbia, in, at University of Columbia in Columbia in Tunja. In fact, it was one small city close to uh, Bogota, which is the capital. And after I moved to Mexico to study my master and PhD. And my, my research on uh, undergraduate thesis was uh, about cosmology. So in that, in that moment, cosmology, I remember was really nice topic to do physics because in that moment, I, cosmology people uh, thought that cosmology mixes between uh, different topics, mathematics, thermodynamics, rel uh, general relativity, uh, computing, and a lot of other kind of, uh, branches of physics. Then uh, I started to work on that uh, area. Um, after I moved in my master and my PhD, I, I moved to um, high energy physics. So my main topic in, in, PhD, in my PhD was on high energy physics or particle physics. And there I, I explored topics on Higgs, um, Higgs particle. And to do that, we use a lot of computing. <laughs> um, after I was to a pitch, uh, sorry, a postdoctoral research at the uh, National Autonomous University of Mexico, and after I got my um, uh, my first opportunity as a formal job in in the same university as associate professor, and now I am working at Texas. Um, and I mentioned before, I'm really, really happy working here. In that moment, when I started to work in my first job at the uh, National Autonomous University of Mexico, I create uh, different events, but two mains um, about the quantum computing. One is this one, Q Mexico. So if you go there after, you can check the different events and in this part, I don't remember where, but in one workshop that we gave, it was the last year, we um, collaborate with Strange Work. And um, Andrew is here, and that's the reason also I'm happy because um, I, we feel in Mexico, in Mexico we feel uh, really, really nice uh, working with um, Strange Works. So, okay, let me start with my, with my um, slides. So, okay. And also let me first start with a short story. Uh, when, um, I remember when I was a child, people thought, uh, told me that in 2000, um, there will be uh, flying cars. So I remember, <laughs> You know, as a scientist or my uh, June mind scientist, I thought that we will see uh, cars flying everywhere. Now the reality is different, right? There are some companies, uh, he, uh, I don't remember here, maybe in, in the USA, maybe in other countries, I remember in Europe, there is some uh, company working to get this kind of transportation. Yes, I don't know if the, this one, this is real, but I think this is really re real, this uh, cars, I think it's real. And we, we, uh, we are ready for that kind of technology. So now 
when I said uh, quantum computing or quantum computers, what do you think? Maybe you imagine something like this. One a screen with different atoms or different nucleus or particles, or maybe one apparatus made from different, uh, with different uh, uh, small pieces, right? The problem is that the reality are the expectations are different, right? And I, uh, I want to, to talk about these kind of things today, right? Which is that we call quantum computers, right? Uh, but let me uh, try to give one small introduction just to concepts. Yeah, or not theoretical view. We are not going to use or to, to, to touch or to see that kind of computers. At least here, I don't have. Okay, so my name is Javier Ordus. I am going to work. I'm working at Baylor University. Here, I I have uh, been working with people in different areas on quantum computing and quantum machine learning, right? And we are going to talk why should we think on quantum. Right. So, as I mentioned before, the quantum world is uh, really interesting. Why? Because if we uh, recall the my story, my short story about um, airplane. Oh, sorry, flying cars. Flying and cars are uh, words that we use every day. Hello. <laughs> okay. Every day we use flying and cars, continuous. But you don't use quantum word in everything. You don't say, give me the quantum sugar or give me quantum, I don't know, <laughs> something, no? The, the situation with the quantum word the, is that we have to know where that word comes from. So let me say where, where is the, that word comes from. Uh, in this talk, we are going to provide one general, uh, general view or a review on quantum mechanics, right? Because we, we have to know where the quantum world comes from. Okay, so in physics, we have different branches and here you can see some of them and even there are different schemes that people propose, but, um, to, to say or to talk about this part, what the quantum computing mean, or the quantum computers mean, then um, we have to talk about the classical and modern physics. In classical physics, we have areas as mechanics proposed by Newton with the three laws, maybe you can you remember or after it. In this moment, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. But also we have different areas there, thermodynamics, electromagnetism, and other areas, right? And after it was more than one century, we started to talk about the modern physics. It was because in that moment, more than 10, uh, 100 years, uh, the physics, the classical physics didn't explain everything. For example, the, um, the radiation of the black body, we don't know in that moment. And in particular, to, to try to describe how one black body radiates energy or emits energy, we need to explore areas as quantum mechanics. This area, quantum mechanics, was proposed by Max Planck, right? Okay, let me, maybe uh, in, uh, <laughs> so far, I gave a lot of information and different words and different uh, things there. But to continue, let me say, if you have some questions or some comments, please open your micro or put your questions on the on the on the chat. Let me I can see the chat. Yeah, hi. Let's see. 
אוקיי. Guys, to, before to continue, please let me know where are you in this moment. You, all of you are in, the, in Texas or in which part? Put on the chat, please. We have uh, uh, seven, seven people. Yeah, San Antonio. Great, thank you. Austin. New Jersey, yeah. <laughs> We have... One, two, three, four, Round Rock. Oh, yeah. Round Rock. Austin, okay. Five. And. Okay. Oh, Austin. Okay. Um, right. Then continue. Continue uh, moving forward uh, for, uh, forward for in, in the, with the talk. Then. In that moment, um, more than 100 years, um, this guy, Max Planck, started to, to study the, how the body radiates energy. That was, was maybe, I don't know in that moment what the people think, but uh, maybe it was normally or abnormally <laughs> to think, how? Oh, I'm going to describe how one, uh, I don't know, one body radiates energy. That was maybe crazy. One guy said, maybe I think somebody said, this, this guy is crazy. <laughs> okay, one of the two problems in that moment that we have in more than 100 years was the quantum, uh, with that problem, We create the general relativity and the other one create uh, or set up the quantum mechanics. In particular, the black body radiation is related to quantum mechanics. The other one is important, but in this moment, we are not going to talk about it, right? Okay. Okay. So, oh, see here, it was um, Planck uh, proposed this quantum mechanics 110 or 20 years ago, right? But see, this conference was in 1981, right? It means 40 years ago. And here you can see some people there in that picture that proposed the quantum computing. So it means was more or less or kind of Uh, 60 or 70 years after we proposed the quantum mechanics, right? So here you can see um, Feynman. Somebody can see Feynman? Yeah, maybe number 25. You can see, I hope you, you hopefully you can read it. The number 25, this guy, 25, Richard Feynman, he and other guys proposed the idea about quantum computing. Right there, if you can see the different names, you are going to see Freeman Dyson. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, two or three years ago, more or less, or maybe it was the last year. I don't remember, but maybe it was two years ago. Freeman Dyson, um, Feynman, and also there are some computing. Then ah, Fredkin, and also more interesting people, Toffoli. Here you can see after I can share this um, this this slide with you or if you want after here you go to the source and click there and you can go to the website. Okay, so what but what does it mean in terms of the publications the quantum computing? See in this plot um, means that. How many in 1995, we don't have a lot of people, a lot of uh, publication. Remember that uh, this uh, topic or what the computer was proposed, 1981, more or less, uh, kind of. Um, and here we can see that in that moment, how the number of publication or papers or documents started uh, to increase, right? So 
to the last year, we have more than 8,000 um, quantum computing and algorithms documents published in different websites. So it means that it's really, uh, really interesting how the, or the behavior about the different uh, document or publication on quantum computing. Okay. Also, let me say how the, um, what, what does it mean the quantum computing um, in terms of the different uh, company and also the, num the qubits, the number of qubits, right? For example, you can see uh, IBM, the first uh, on the top, you can see um, IBM, Oxford, Berkeley, Stanford, MIT. In that moment, they have just two qubits, right? One quantum computing, computer with two. And after we can see on the uh, bottom, you can see Brigetti uh, two years ago, they said that they are working with 128 qubits. So see how the number of qubits are increasing continuously, or maybe exponentially, maybe better. Uh, but see, this is, um, Mm, different, there are some different topics here or ideas here that maybe we can discuss in the next slide. Let me, let me continue with my talk because somebody maybe can say, hey, what happened if there are one company working with, uh, with uh, order of 1,000 of qubits? That is, the, and in fact, this, that company is not here. Uh, yeah, it's here, it's here, but um, we don't put the, the, the way, the, sorry, <laughs> the, the number of people that now the web is working. Um, <clears throat> okay, let me continue with this idea about the quantum mechanics and also quantum work. So, in terms of, uh, or for the physicists, the quantum mechanics is a fundamental theory. It's important to maintain the formalism in terms of quantum mechanics. If we are going to talk or to work on quantum computing, it's, it's really nice, it's good, it's a great field to work, but please continue or maintain the formalism and take care with the quantum work. Right? Because as I mentioned before, quantum world is an important world that proposed for different physicists to try to describe natural phenomena, right? Okay, what does it mean quantum world? It means a small piece, something. In that moment where was proposed this world is small pieces of energy after we can, we, we knew that there are more things in small nature that are quantized, right? For example, the um, angular moment, the spin, the charge, all of them are quantum numbers that we use in quantum mechanics. Okay, but how we can think that this theory is really, it's real or we can use to describe the nature. Oh, because there were different experiments to test this theory. For example, the double experiment. And with this uh, experiment, we can say that the light have, has the dual nature, it means the light can behave as a particle and also as a wave. So uh, this is one of the really interesting experiments. And also there are other experiments similar to this, but with electrons, right? We are not going to uh, discuss about with every detail there, but it's just to, I, I just want, I want to try just to say that this is really 
real. The quantum mechanics is really real. So remember that I show you in the third slide one how or how is the expectations about one quantum computer, just one screen with uh, one atom there. So please just think that the quantum mechanics is a really important theory uh, for us, for the physicists and now applying on the different uh, areas as quantum as computing, computing, then now we have to respect the formalism. Okay, more experiments we are not going to discuss with every detail here, but it's just one structured lag or get lag experiment. Uh, and here we have a, a beam with particles, electrons, and we can um, deflect it with a, a magnetic field. And on the, uh, on the right, you can see the screen. And there we are going to detect the different um, particle, or how, yeah, the pattern, how the, what is the pattern when after to, to send this beam through this magnetic field. So um, classically, we should expect that the, on the screen, we, sh we see a line on the screen. If you see the face on the screen, you should see uh, one, you would see one uh, line. But in fact, experiments said that you get just two spots. So it means that the electrons, uh, in fact, the spin are quantism, right? So those are real uh, experiments that we use on quantum mechanics. There are, uh, so far there are any question, please put there now, if you want to say something, one comment, anything, please put on the chat or everything is okay. Okay. Okay, so, uh, but let me see, uh, let me uh, mention how the um, quantum mechanics was proposed. The quantum mechanics um, was proposed in a similar way as geometry was proposed. Mm, I think when I say, I said geometry, you can remind one name, which is Euclides, remember Euclides? Okay, this guy and all the people working on geometry propose the actions, right? Which is one statement that people accept as a real, as a true, right? Quantum mechanics was proposed in a similar way, right? You, we have in quantum mechanics postulate. So postulates, it's in a similar way as an axiom, it's an idea accepted by most of people to uh, for or to develop something. In this case, we have postulates to create the quantum mechanics, right? So um, the quantum mechanics depends about the book that you read. You can find maybe four, five, six or even three postulates. Just let me mention, also we are not going to um, go through the every detail, just to mention that we, uh, how we uh, build the uh, quantum mechanics. So we use uh, one first postulate where uh, to define where are going to work. So we have to define the arena or the so it means the Hilbert space. We use this concept to propose where our operators or vectors are going to live or any other thing where are going to live. Um, second postulate is about the operator, how we are going to um, make or to extract information 
information of the different states, right? So here, U is one operator applied onto um, one state, which is, um, you know, the brand notation, this uh, symbol in a vertical line, and also something like this and an angle, it means a cat, right? So we know, we call this a notation as a, a bracket notation or sometimes Dirac notation. Notation. Okay, so here we can see how one operator apply on one uh, state. And after to apply one operator to extract information, we are going to get a new state, which is psi prime, right? The cat psi prime. Okay, all the important thing is how we, in, in this, uh, okay, um, we use the, this equation, which is Schrodinger equation, just to say how one uh, state are going to evolve, evolve in, the, in the time. So, uh, and here you can see uh, different symbols. One is the uh, H bar, which means the uh, plan constant, uh, divided by two pi or four pi, I, I don't remember what well, the, the constant. Um, on the other hand, on the left, right hand, you can see H is not the Hadamard gate, it's the Hamiltonian, because in quantum mechanics, we use different operators to extract information uh, of uh, different states. One of the of these operators are this one, Hamiltonian. This one function we are not going to discuss about that in this moment. Okay, and this one, this postulate is how we are going to measure something. Okay, first we are going to define that we can uh, define one uh, psi k as a, a summation of different uh, basis vector times some coefficients, right? And we are going to put in one summation. Also, it's just one definition. Uh, and here we can see how the uh, one, uh, one spectrum of the Different, this part is for different bodies in different temperatures. Just to say, or just to mention that the previous construction, the different postulates about quantum, quantum mechanics, those, all of this, all of them are working. How? Because we can see or we can know this um, spectrum to know how one or how different bodies radiates the energy, right? And in particular, the six um, six thousand Kelvin is mm, um, kind of the energy or the radiation related with our star, the sun. So our star sun radiates energy in a similar, like a 6,000 Kelvin body, right? Maybe you can see there the spectrum with the different colors and, um, and you can see, or you can think why we can see the, the sun as a yellow, with the yellow color, yeah. It's, it's just one, maybe the better curve could be 7,000 Kelvin because that is the temperature on the, on the shell of the, of the sun. Okay. Okay, but let me say why I put this slide. Uh, <clears throat> I put this slide because we talk a lot at least in our medium about um, quantum computing or computers, but uh, different to, to make something different is that even those these devices, 
that I show here is my phone, my mobile phone, mobile phone. It works thanks part of the quantum mechanics because we use some definitions coming from quantum mechanics. So we can say that this device, maybe one kind of quantum computer or quantum phone, but people don't know that it uses also uh, concepts coming from quantum mechanics, right? So even those devices as a computer also use some concepts of the quantum computer, right? The, um, the idea with the, with the new, um, new paradigm could be uh, is that implement quantum concepts on quantum computer or computing is just got or get different concepts as entanglement, interference, and also important direct notation that we use in quantum mechanics to introduce in quantum computing, right? That is the main idea, right? Okay, guys, I think uh, I would like to promote more the discussion. So if this, if this moment, if you have some question, this is a great moment to, uh, to put on the chat box, could be at least, or if you want to put, I don't know, I'm zipping, boring or something like that, please let me know. <laughs> or unmute and let me know. Guys. Okay, I, I'm going to ask you something. Let me, um, Joshua, Joshua. Joshua. <clears throat> yes, hello. Hello, Joshua. Yes. Hello. Uh, Joshua, could you let me know uh, if you have if you have experience with the quantum computers, or maybe with different um, models, or I don't know something about the quantum computer computing. Um, I I pretty much have zero experience. My my first uh, introduction to quantum computing material was this Tuesday at our intro workshop. So I'm pretty new to this whole world still. So. Great, it's good. This is a great time to start to work on quantum computing. Um, in my experience, I, I work in here at Baylor University as a quantum machine learning scientist. And you don't imagine how many papers and books I have to read continuously or check, and also a lot of uh, information about the programming. Oh, that's a lot of information, but it's really nice. Really, really good. Uh, Joshua, um, but what is your background? Um, I'm, I'm a computer science major at oh. UT. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Okay, thank you, Joshua. Let me ask uh, Sarbesh. Sarbesh, let me know if my pronunciation of your name is not good, please. Sarbesh. No, okay. Sarbesh is not here. Maybe he has problem with the the mic. Okay, Sniha. Sniha is. Good, please let me know. Oh, hi. Hello. Uh, Sneha, it's good my pronunciation? Um, yeah, it's Sneha. Sneha, thank you. Yeah. So Sneha, let me know, uh, what is your experience with the quantum computer? Um, I actually don't have any actual experience. Okay. Um, I've only heard about it through like a friend and like have 
a very broad understanding of what it is, but I don't have any actual experience with it. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, and what is your background? Um, I'm actually a neuroscience major currently, but I want to also double major in computer science. Oh, okay, great. Thank you so much. And okay. Okay, guys, just let me uh, finish with my talk. And after, if you want to ask anything else, please. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, thank you for your uh, participation, guys. Okay. But first, let me say that in this moment, remember that I mentioned the dates and also different topics on quantum computing and, and physics concepts. Uh, now, the quantum computing, uh, there are different, how we can call this, uh, schemes to define the different models or paradigms that we have in quantum computing. So um, at least we have six, six models to work on quantum computing. Uh, I'm not going to mention everything with more of with a lot of detail, but just to mention that we have something really interesting uh, ah, it's okay, Sarvesh, don't worry. Um, really, really interesting, which is topological quantum. This is really nice and a good theoretical topic if you want to work. Uh, also, one more is one-way quantum computer. So here we uh, use, I think it's more, um, a, focus on the graph uh, topic, right? Okay, the, the previous one was most close to the physics. This one is more close to computer or um, um, scientists on computing. So I think it's, if you want to work, this is going to be a really nice topic for you, right? which is quantum Turing machine computer or universal quantum computer. computer the other model. This is the fourth model, which is the quantum logic gate. This is the most famous model to work in quantum computer or quantum computing. Uh, it was proposed um, 20 or 30 years ago, more or less, by Kitaya. And after it, if you click here, you can go to the, to the PDF and also here. Okay, um, the idea with this uh, model is, it's as some extension could be uh, of the universal classical gate, it's similar to that one. Maybe if you work with uh, IBM, Qiskit IBM, maybe you use this model or this paradigm. Okay. And this is the other one, which is adiabatic uh, quantum computation. And this is also interesting, it's really good, but it's close more uh, to the physics, but even uh, it's really interesting if we want to use some calculations in considering the quantum annealing, which is similar to the classical annealing, right? Okay. And this is the other most popular uh, model to work in quantum computing, right? Which is QML or quantum machine learning. Here is really nice because with this model, we can implement uh, something that the physics logs, which are, which is the, Hamiltonian <laughs> and also more equations and it's close to physics. So uh, it's really interesting and it's really nice. We, we are going to publish some papers on this, on this topic and all quantum machine learning and quantum computing. 
and those are going to publish maybe next year. But it's, some of them were accepted for different journal, uh, journals and conferences. Okay, guys. So depends what you want to want to work, and also depends of on, on your background. You can work on different kinds of those models that I share with you. This is my final star with the difference in quantum computing paradigm or sometimes models. Okay, guys, conclusions. We talk about the quantum computing. We talk about its relevance, sorry, quantum mechanics. And we talk about the, its relevance in topics as quantum computing. Also, um, briefly, we discuss about the concepts uh, related with quantum mechanics and also the models on quantum computing. I would like to have time to talk with you uh, to maybe say that or mention that we have we are there are different initiatives working on quantum mechanics. And at the end it depends what, what do you want to work to um, maybe to do analysis with um, artificial intelligence as quantum machine learning or maybe if we want to use uh, just uh, circuits to analyze some things, so that's a good idea. Um, uh, okay, that's, that's all guys, but I want to know more about you, your background, your ideas, or what do you want to do, or why are you working now in quantum computing? What is uh, Ronak? Yes, yeah, I'm back online. Uh, <laughs> okay. So thank you, thank you so much for uh, the presentation. That was really wonderful. I, I loved all the slides you had, um, and I think I agree. We should uh, have all of the participants talk about what they're working on right now. Um, but for now, I'll stop the recording. So thank you for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you.